Winters in Bristol Bay meant blizzards and lots of sub-zero temperatures. In order to be successful at fox trapping, one had to work the trap line in these conditions. This fox trapper, Harold Backman, didn't need to go up river to trap fox. Rather, he traveled miles across the tundra by dog sled to set his traps. His method of trapping fox involved the use of steel jaw-like traps that were loosely anchored in the tundra rather than hard anchored. This prevented the fox from escaping by ripping off their leg in the trap. Traps had to be kept blood and scent free and were therefore boiled and cleaned on a regular basis. Various types of bait were used. Some trappers used canned salmon while others used a manufactured bait that had a strong scent. The fox were knocked unconscious before being handled. This was a safety precaution against aggressive freshly caught prey that could cause serious injury. The trappers work included the full dog team and plenty of miles of travel in winter months. And his work was far from complete once the fox were caught. The process of removing the pelt and preparing it for market took time and skill. To remove the pelt, the trapper had to make a slit down the back of each hind leg to the anus and from the front paws to the elbows. Then, the pelt was peeled down toward the head while hanging from a hind foot. A sharp knife was used by the trapper to make small strokes and cut away the pelt from the body. This involved a great deal of care so as not to nick the pelt. Trappers then treated the fur with cornmeal which enhanced its appearance after which the pelt had to be aired outside before it was ready for market. Finding the best market could also prove tricky. Some trappers sold their pelts to fur buyers who visited villages and were essentially middlemen that took a percentage of the profit before delivery to the furriers. Some fur buyers would bring cases of liquor to a village before buying and get trappers drunk and take advantage of them. Although this was not a problem in Naknik, it did occur elsewhere. While Naknik never got boozed by fur buyers, some trappers did sell to middlemen who took part of their profits. Harry Backman shows a freshly trapped fox. He and Anna Backman display part of the winner's take as it airs in preparation for market. The most lucrative prices for pelts were acquired by directly dealing with furriers in the lower 48. During the year these pelts were sold, the trafficker could fetch as much as $18 per pelt in a direct sale. Some trappers in the Bristol Bay region had this kind of arrangement with the Seattle Fur Exchange and Moss and Stephan in St. Louis. Mm -hmm.